So I'm here with Harry Matic, uh, medalist at UK Nationals last year. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was your back on the podium after two years in the fourth, that's right? Uh, yeah, I think so, roughly that, yeah. And you landed your first fully rotated quad toe. First fully rotated quad, yes. Congrats. Thank you very much. Um, what was last season like? Uh, last season was um, was was quite interesting because I feel like every other goal that I had kind of went completely out the window. I had my eyes on getting this quad done and I had nothing else in mind at all. And I think that kind of shows if you watch some of the some of the skates that I did last season. If you watch the Nationals one especially, I did the quad and I think I spent the rest of the program just kind of going, I'm happy I've landed the quad. <laughs> um, and then I feel like I, I, you know, I, I let myself lose concentration for the combo and just went uh, went splat on the floor. But yeah, no, last season was, was interesting because I, I like every competition I was like, right, I want this quad now, I want this quad now. Mm. And I knew I could do it as well. Like coming up to um, coming up to every single event, I knew I was like, right, I've got, I've got a shot, I've got a shot, I can do it. And then I, I remember Warsaw, um, I, I did land it. I, I managed to get the, the landed quad and then I managed to get a triple toe on the end of it in mm. combination as well. Um, and I actually kept my head on that one. So I, I kept my head for the rest of the program and I finished and I was really, really happy and then they called it as an under rotated. Yeah. And if you watch the video, it's only slightly, but you know, I was like, oh. so I was like, okay, I still need to go again. Um, but yeah, I managed to get it done at national, so I was, I was quite happy about that. Are you going to bring it back this season? I'm going to, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Yeah, I, um, I quite like I, I, now that I've done it. All my other goals are kind of in my head again. Yes, um, what were they? Sorry, I should. Have so, no, so, 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 I, I just, I want, I want to hit uh, scores. I want to hit clean. Mm. I want to, I want to get, I want to be in a position where. Um, I, I, I'm getting better at doing consistently clean skates in competition because um, I, I really feel like that's something I've, I've not really been quite good at. Um, so now my goals are coming more, coming back into focus. Like I've done my quad, I want to get my quad out again, but I also want to skate clean. So I'm now more a bit like, ha. Oh. So I think it's going to come down to how it's feeling. Um, maybe not quite on the day. I don't really like to do that. I like to know what I'm going in for, but. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll, like, we'll see how it goes. I, you know, I want to get it out, but I also want to get clean and, and do well and maximise my GOE yeah, sure. uh, and stuff like that. So yeah. Okay. We saw you at ACI in September at Wilson Classic, mm. where you have become a fixture and a fan favourite. <laughs> <laughs> you set your personal best there in the free skate. Mm. What, when you were saying score goals, what kind of scores are you looking to hit? Um. <sighs> Honestly, I just, I just, I, any kind of PR, PB or you know, best score is, is I'm happy with. I, I, I'm not looking at any particular score. I would like, and I'd like to hit 200 points in competition at some point. I'm not quite sure if I uh, can get that this season. I would need to go really, really well. Mm. Um, but that's a goal for the future as well. So you, you revealed your programs back in Canada. Mm. You've got uh, Bohemian Rhapsody and Batman. Yes. Um, you're well known for like quirky, fun programs. Can you mm. tell us a bit about how you usually go about choosing your music? So, I, I usually know kind of what I want, sort of thing. I, I, I normally have like an idea. Like, I was really reluctant to get rid of my Nightmare Before Christmas. I had that, I think, for about five seasons. I absolutely <laughs> loved it. Um, and so I, I definitely was thinking, you know, I, I was happy to keep going with the Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, but I was like, I, I don't want to, as, as, as I'm not going to change it unless I think I can come up with something a bit better. Sure. So I was, I was kind of looking around and I was kind of going, you know, like I want a character piece. I always like a character piece. And I was thinking, you know, like I'd love to do something kind of, something to do in like the, that, the world of like Batman and things. But like, I was like everyone, everyone who I've seen do something, it's always either really dull or like for me, like I, you know, I, was like, I don't really want to do that. And then I realized, you know, ooh, I reckon the Joker would work. So I, I kind of was like, ah, I was playing around with music from the Joker and I kind of found this the piece uh, from the Miracle of Sound that, this, that my program ends with. And uh, when I found this, I was like, ah, that. And I sent it to uh, my coach and said, right, this for a free. And he actually thought I was kidding. He actually thought I was joking because <laughs> oh, no? you know, he, uh, he emailed me back and said, oh, ha ha, very funny. I'm like, no, 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 seriously, I think this can work. And he was like, actually, you know, the more I listen to it, you know, yeah, okay. But I thought, okay, I can't use this for the full thing because it's like, it's, I was like, I reckon it would get quite samey. So I was thinking around and I, I, I liked the idea of kind of having like a Frankenstein 
program, which it was really hard to cut, if you know what I mean. That, like, Do your own cuts, I yeah. assume, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so it was really hard to cut, but I, I liked the idea of having, like, what's it, you know, like a, like an after-hours theme park thing. Oh, okay. Um, you know, yeah, and nice, I was like, this nice, kind of nice. theme, I was like, oh, I reckon that could be kind of spooky and nice, mm. but, like, it's, like, a same but different in terms of, like, the, the, the end bit. Um, and I heard the, like, the, the theme from, like, the Jack Nicholson bit, and I was like, ah, oh, that, would, that would work. Because it, it, initially we were going to use a piece... I saw it. I heard it in a competition. I, I don't like to reuse music if someone else sure. has used it. Um, but it was used. I think it was the short program from Yagadin, one of Yagadin's programs. Oh, okay. And I heard that. And I thought, ooh, that would fit. And I was like, eh, and I couldn't quite get it to fit. And I couldn't. Mm. Uh, and I heard this Jack Nicholson, uh, the, the theme uh, from the film where Jack Nicholson plays the Joker. That is, and um, I thought, oh, that fits. So it, it, there's usually like a bit of a progression with my music where I kind of know roughly what I want. I know like the theme. I know like the style that I want and then it kind of it kind of evolves kind of a little bit to like get exactly oh well, or I hear something and I'm like oh yes that's what I want but you knew you wanted Batman but I knew style. I wanted Batman I knew I wanted something kind of or some kind of superhero thing you okay. know like I wanted some kind of character piece that would be good but I was like oh, I'd be you know it's like, oh, I'd be boring to play the Batman but then I was like you know and then of course oh the Joker ding 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 are you a big comics consumer no, but with my uh, but with my short, I love Queen. Okay. I love Queen. The, Wait, you my, chose a, a, like an instrumental yeah, version. Yeah, yeah, I did. So I, I've always wanted to skate to Bohemian Rhapsody. Always. Okay. I, I've, ever since like 2011, I've wanted to skate oh, wow. to Bohemian Rhapsody for like years and years and years. But there's always been something else that kind of came up, and I've got oh, I, I like that. I should quite like to do that, or oh, that's good. I'd quite like to do that as well. So it's always been like a, a second choice sort mm. of thing. And then the film came out, the Bohemian Rhapsody film came out, and I thought to myself, ah, if I don't use it now, it'll be really well used, because I was like, everyone's going to want it now. So, so I was like, I better use it now, otherwise, um, otherwise it's going to become, you know, something like, uh, something that people hear and go, oh, yeah. this again. And so I was like, right, I'm having it. I don't, I don't care what anyone else's opinion is. <laughs> I'm, having, uh, I'm having something from Queen. I thought, I want Bohemian Rhapsody, something from Queen. Again, I like character, so I was like, ah. Oh, you know, I, I was looking through Queen and I was like, okay. Uh, I liked the song, like, you know, Slightly Mad. Mm. I loved that song and I've played it to a few different people and the response that I got was like, no. Nah. Oh, no, 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 it's not going to work. It's, it's not. And I can kind of see what they mean. You put it on the speakers on the, on the rink and it, it gets quite, quite samey. It kind of fades into the mm. rink a little bit and I was like, oh, well, I really like it, but... You know they are kind of right. It does, it's not. It's not. It's, again, it's like there's, a, there's an evolution of the kind of the, the music that I want. So I knew I wanted Queen. I was like this one. Mm. And then I heard this, the, the cello one, the kind of the cello, the orchestral mm. Bohemian Rhapsody, and I thought, oh, I love it. it really nice I one. really love it. I, I, I decided, you know what, I'm going to use this one because it's kind of it's Queen, mm. and it's got all of the character of Queen. But it hasn't. It's not the, the. It's not. It's not too on the nose. It's not. It's not the obvious, not, one, not yeah. the obvious one. So I, I thought, oh, this is perfect. So uh, that's. It's the one by uh, the Brooklyn duo and uh, Dover Quartet. And uh, and actually, they were really good because they got back to me really quickly when I was asking for their permission to use it because we didn't have the code that we needed. And so they got back to me really quickly. So yeah, really thanks to them. Because oh, awesome. um, I was really scared. I was like, oh no, I'm not going to be able to use it. <laughs> I was like, this perfect piece of music that I've wanted for ages. Um, but yeah, they, kudos to you for asking though. Like I know that's well, not consistent. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, I had to get permission to use the main bit of my free as well. And I was like, oh no, because I thought it was Mark Hamill singing. Mm. And I was like, oh no, I'm going to have to... Um, and they're never going to reply to me, you know. And anyway, it's not. It's um, it's the miracle of sound, and, and they got back to me like the next day and oh, said, amazing. "Yeah, of course you can." I'm like, oh, great, cool. cool. <laughs> that's so lucky. So yeah, that's that's my music, really. Cool. And choreo. So you're known for. I remember some topic tightrope walking and like mm -hmm. there were always some like fun choreo touches. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it um, Richard Beamish and Emma Davies who choreograph for you as well? Yes, what's, what's and I have like? a lot. To, I have a lot of input as well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I um, honestly, with my with my choreography, it's it's one of those things where I just I I, I, I think a while ago I, I, I realized you know I'm not gonna have the same level of technical as you know some of the top skaters. Sure. I, you know, and I thought you know well if I want to stand out, I want to kind of be. Uh, unique in some way and I was like well I, I know I'm I've got a kind of a very unique character 
even off the ice, I'm quite, <laughs> you know, I've got a very strong character. And I, I, I thought, well, you know, I can, I can let this shine through I can, and use this to my advantage. Sometimes in, in my free, especially, and mm. I, did, I did this as well in my Nightmare Before Christmas, I, I sometimes just kind of ad lib a little bit and I have to really rein that in because it, it kind of when you're practicing for jumps and you're setting up for jumps mm. if you've just if you sometimes doing a bit of different choreography it gives you a different amount of speed yeah, or yeah, so sometimes I've kind of missed jumps because I've got too into the choreography <laughs> um, so we have to really kind of be careful to not do that but yeah it's 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 a lot of fun to choreograph these uh, these things and i just I, I like you know i like programs that are fun to watch yeah no, you know I, a yeah i mean I, I had a program um oh, quite a while ago now where i remember i had a different coach then and he said to me he says right we're just going to run the, the program without the jumps in it just walk mm. through the jumps just a bit of conditioning and i was like okay i remember thinking even in the training session this program is nothing but jumps you know i was yeah. like this program is you know i was going around kind of going if you were to the, take two rotations out of all my jumps for example there's no program there so I, re- I think I, yeah I remember thinking yeah. even then and I, I'm realizing like if you were to do singles instead of your triples is there a program you know so I, I that's the test that I kind of apply to my programs at the moment is you know if, if I took if I took my jumps out if I did singles instead of the triples or the, the, the quad do I still have a good program yeah and that's, that's you know, a great rule to live by yeah yeah and your choreo sequences are always awesome. So, mm. <laughs> it, there's always, they're always the most fun to choreograph. <laughs> uh, cool. Um, how would you describe your own style then? Unique. <laughs> I try and make it unique. I don't know. I, I, um, I just I like being different. I've, sure. I've always been different off the ice and on the ice. I, I just I like being different and quirky and weird and in my own unique, in my own little way. Yeah. <laughs> fun. Um, you were saying you wanted to escape. To Queen since 2011. You've been competing in seniors since is that seven, 2012? Seven years? Am I right? I think the last Junior Worlds I did was 2011. So yeah, okay. I think the first time I did the first season, se- uh, so first senior season would have been 2012. Yeah. So I guess when you started in seniors, probably having one quad in the program in the free would be enough to get you pretty close to the podium if it was landed. And now things have changed <laughs> yeah so we, we have we have really high standards of, of skating in this country now I love it um, it pushes me because I, I come in and that you can't get I can't like let myself get complacent or because we mm. have really high we have really good skaters now and I'm like oh well if I if I sleep in they're not going to be sleeping in so mm. what's it been like for you to see like what what you admired in skaters growing up compared to what you see skaters doing now Ooh. Well, when I was a kid, I remember I watched the 2004 Worlds, the last group of, this, of the free program in the men. Mm. I watched that. Uh, I did I on videotape. That's how long ago it was. Oh, now. amazing! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember I watched this every single day till the following Worlds. I, I loved it, and I was watching it, and I, especially uh, Brian Jabert and Stefan Lambiel's uh, skates. Okay. I really loved those ones. I think honestly, I think some of my choreography might have come from admiring Lambiel because he he had the the, 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 the zebra outfit. He did, uh, and so I think he was a bit of a character as well. And he, I remember him him doing the spins before they were required. Yes, I, I you know I've always wondered if he, if that's the reason we have the spins the way we do now, and like he uh, you know you just did the spins just because they're not going to give me any extra points, but why not? Yeah, I know. You know, so yeah, so I think that's probably a, a major influence now. The way I skate, yeah. Were um, they were they your two icons then growing up? Pretty much, yeah. Andrew? Brian Jabert, and Tushenko, obviously as well. Okay, um, yeah, sure. But yeah, uh, I think they they were the main three that I, I kind of grew up watching and grew up admiring. Um, oh, and and, and Tak uh, Dazuke, Dazuke Takahashi as well. Oh, yeah. His two thousand eight skate when he did the uh, the like the hip hop version of Cyber Swan. Yeah, <laughs> Cyber Swan. I loved that. Program. I watched that so much. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> Yeah, I think I can really see all of that in your skating. So we're seeing you next at Nationals in mm-hmm. two weeks? Is that right? Yeah, something like that. It's, uh, it's end last, I, my short is the last day of November, yeah. Yeah, it's just like there, obviously. Any clues where you'd want to go after that, where we might see you again? Ooh, how that goes. Um, yeah, it depends how that goes. I, um, we usually like to do uh, the Challenge Cup. Yeah. We do, we, that's a, a staple for us, we, we mm-hmm. like that one. Beyond that, I don't know. Uh, we, we kind of we change depending on schedule and how training's going and different things. Um, but yeah, so ch- Challenge Cup is usually a solid one for us. So let's talk about schedule. Um, mm. You're working as a personal trainer, is yes. that right? Working as a personal trainer, yeah. What's that like having to balance 
work in skating? Honestly, I, I like it uh, quite a bit because it means that I get to. Because I, I was I was I was wanting to coach. Um, mm. I wanted to go into coaching, and obviously I'm going to go into coaching when I'm retired from my skating as well. It was putting me off the idea that I would skate and then have to spend hours on the ice in yeah, my skates, sure. standing in the cold. Um, and I was like, I really, I, like, I really want to coach, but I don't want to do this and train. I was like, it's going to be a lot of hours on the ice. And my sister suggested doing the, the personal training. And I thought, ooh, it's a great solution, because now I get to, not only do I get to input into skaters and get to input into their skating in a way that is, has really helped me, but I also don't have to spend that amount of time on the ice. I don't, I'm not limited to when we've got ice as well, so I can schedule people in you know, when it's convenient. So it's, it's, it's a real kind of, it's a job that I love. I really, I really do like it, yeah. You were saying that uh, you, you realise some stuff about your own skating when you're coaching people. What kind of things has it changed? Ooh. I think when you coach, you realise that you, when you're when you're on the coaching side of things, I think you kind of you go, this is what we need to do, this is what we need to get done, we're going to get it done. When you're when you're a skater and you're on the side of you're having to do it, yeah. I think you you're it's very easy to kind of go, oh, I don't want to run a free today, <laughs> you know, I don't want to do my program, I, it's tiring, oh, I'm tired today. Um, so I think it's given me a little bit more of a toughness that it's like no oh, okay. no it's a free program day we have to do free that's that's how it goes so I think that's I think it's really helped me in that way as well and you've managed to actually carry it over to your own training yes that's impressive <laughs> <laughs> well, so, a little bit <laughs> I do love a good moan <laughs> cool so how how long's a work week for you then because I guess you must be training what, um 25 30 hours a week so I train, uh, so I, well I skate 10 times a week um, and then I do um, maybe three, four gym sessions a week. My days are quite long some days, <laughs> I <can have laughs> but I, I like to fit them in, like Saturday is a busy coaching day because I, okay. I don't train on a Saturday. So. Your sister used to skate as well, yeah, I she did, yeah. Does, yeah. She, does she still? Uh, not very, no I don't think so, not very much, she, I think um, she was she was quite good, she did, um, she managed to get, uh, oh, she managed to get all of her doubles and she did really well, she was actually better than me for quite a long time, um, it wasn't, I don't think, I don't actually think I was ever better than her while she was still skating, I think it wasn't until she retired, um, My time to that shine. I was like, yes, I'm going take her now, <laughs> yes. You started skating as uh sort of physical therapy from a yeah, really I, terrible I got, accident. Yeah, I got into skating because um, I was in a, a car accident at five. Um, and um, yeah, it was it was one of those where I, you know, I'd had a head injury, I'd had physical injuries, and um, it was one of those where I was the last person you'd expect to be any good at skating at all. And for a long time, I really was not. Um, like, I remember my, with the first time, the first, um, the first couple of lessons I had, I had like 50, I had literally two minutes, literally two minutes on the end of my sister's 15 minute lesson um, because I didn't have the concentration and the, the, the attention span for oh, any more than injury. that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so I, I just, it was one of those things where I just started really early days, but I, I loved it. And what you do in two hard. minutes? What's a two minutes case? Two minutes. I, oof, I, I only remember <laughs> one lesson. I only remember one two minute lesson, but I think it was uh, back then it was like, let's work on my drags. Do a few drags. Uh, okay, let's do some. Let's do some waltz jumps. Uh, right, over. <laughs> <laughs> but that that must. I mean, injured as you were, if I was your if I were your mother, mm. I would have been so worried that you'd just make the injury. Work. Like, is it's a sport where you fall over so much? Mm, um, I think it's the balance aspect ah. of the sport that helps, like my head injuries and stuff. I think that's what. I think that's one of the reasons why it was prescribed as physical therapy. Um, so you know, I think uh, it did be good, uh, really. Sense. Still does. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Oh yeah. Speaking of the, your beginnings, did you ever? Were you ever recommended to go into pairs? Did you ever think of going? Oh, into um, pairs? well, it's, it's it, you know, I, I uh, it's funny you should ask. No, really, not really. Um, but I, I actually have done a little bit this year. Oh. Um, so yeah, we we've been doing a little bit. I think it's two and a half months now where I've been trying a little bit. And it's it's a lot harder. Oh. Um, my mad respect to any to all pair skaters because they are insane. Like when you watch it, having tried it, mm. oh my gosh, is it harder? Like as I say, I like normally I, I would be in in the gym like maybe three four times a week. Every session on the ice that we do pairs feels like a gym session. Oh really? So it's one of these things where it's like normally after my gym sessions I want to go home, I want to sleep. 
it's it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Who have you been trying it out with? Uh, so there's um, uh, Lydia Smart. She a oh. uh, skater. Uh, she came up to me in um, August, roughly, um, and said, "Hey, do you want to try out a little bit?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure. Why not?" But it's weird. It's because we're, we're wherever we're, I don't know what if what we're doing is good. It's one of those things <laughs> because I've never really followed pairs. I'm kind sure. of ashamed to say. Like I, I've only ever really followed the free. Mm. So. I don't know what is good. I don't know what's difficult. It's like it's like it's like if someone came on and said, "Oh, I've just landed this job. Is that good?" And I, you know, it's a bit like that. You know, we're we're doing we can do some lifts. We can do different things. And I don't know if these lifts are hard, easy. I'm like, has Richard ever coached pairs? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think okay, he, he's 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 a pairs coach. So oh, okay. Um, he's, so he's he can quite, tell you surely. Yeah, well, okay. but he um, but he's always quite like, oh, this needs to be better. Okay, he's like, yeah, oh, this needs to be. Oh, you could do this better. Oh, like when you when you're doing this, he's always he's always uh, correcting and. <laughs> so is this something that might happen then? Uh, maybe. We'll see. Maybe. I mean, Daisuke is going to be a an ice dancer, so he says. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anything's anything's possible at this stage. I think honestly, I think it, it, I, I'm enjoying it. If nothing else, like it's it, it is very fun. It's a lot. I, I would say it's a lot harder than free. Sure. Um, but it, it's a very fun. Uh, thing to do and yeah what, following the, the pairs actually because we, we, we've been watching it has been really interesting as well because it's like a whole thing that I didn't really know exi- well I knew it existed but I'd never really explored it you know watching that as well has been really interesting it's, it's really fun yeah all these different elements mm. the twist particularly <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> in a good way or in a bad way <laughs> the twist particularly is so impressive um, yeah. you know we're, we're just learning we, we can do a, we can do a fairly decent single twist at the moment mm-hmm. and uh, just to kind of throwing someone overhead on the ice it's, it's so like I'm, I'm sure she's terrified <laughs> especially because it's me throwing um, <laughs> but um, I'm terrified for her because I know that if I know whether or not I'm going to catch her or not you got responsibility <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so of those pairs elements mm. twist you said was your was your favourite I do like the twist it's okay. there's something quite nice about what's the, the hardest oh so um, honestly the throw flip I think okay. it's the hardest, yeah. So we, we did, we, we managed to do the throw triple loop within really a few nice. sessions of kind of trying it. That really came easy. The flip's taken a bit longer. We can do a really solid throw double. We can rotate, the uh, get the, the tri- throw triple flip around, but it's just awkward as a, as a throw goes because the, getting the timing of that is really difficult. Yeah, that, that's, I think, is the hard. And, and weirdly, actually, I was going to say weirdly, actually, the death spiral is so difficult because when I watched that, Initially, yeah. I thought, oh, that will be one of the easier ones. <laughs> I was like, you know, compared to the twist, you know, where they throw them up really high, mm. compared to the throws, the throws look really difficult. They'll, those, will, those will take ages to learn. Um, but I was like, oh, the death spiral, that looks like something we could master, you know, fairly, eat fairly quickly. quickly. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's, that's, that's really... What's, what's, you know. the, what's the difficulty? Is it like holding oh, the edge? Or? It's, it's hold, well, for me, it's getting a decent pivot. I've never had a really good pivot. Okay, um, anyway, I've never been able to do spread eagles or anything. I've always been really envious of people that can do cantilevers. Mm. Oh my gosh, I think they look so cool, and well, I've always wanted fairness, to do one. In you are very tall, oh, which is one hundred percent why. Oh, okay, is that why? <laughs> no. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, I've always been jealous of cantilevers. But anyway, um, yeah, no, I think that's part of the reason why mm. I just find that tough. But again, everything's timing. Learning how to do something with someone else, learning how to skate with someone else next to you, is uh, yeah. is really difficult what about singles we've there's there's a trend at the moment of defining like using jumps as a kind of proxy personality test so what's your favorite and least favorite jump Ooh, that um, listeners may draw their own conclusions Ooh, well i love toe i love my okay. toe i can i can i you know, I, I, I feel like i'm quite good at toe and and loop as well i've i've, I've always yeah. found loop quite a comfortable jump Are you more an, of an edge guy or a, a toe guy in general um Never, never thought of that before. I never do. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, you straddle the line. I think I've had to pick a least favorite. I don't know. I think Axel. I'm not a fan mm. of Axel. I'm not. I don't. I feel like of all my jumps, I think Axel is the most awkward. You've got that nice double axel, double axel sequence, though. Mm. Yeah, I like. Uh, I like that one. Have you ever? Do you land triple axles in practice? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. I, it, it's coming. It's. It, we're working. Ah. It. it is coming. But no, no, not no uh, land of triple axles as yet. Yeah, working progress. Yeah. Um, more stupid personality test questions. Oh, always a fun thing. 
if you could get a Winnie the Pooh stall, is there a new style? <laughs> After each skate, what would you want chucked at you? Oh, um, oh, I don't know. I think I, I still I still have a, a spot for Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay. Because I was told I cannot have this music by a previous coach. Okay. I know. Oh, oh, because. Um, didn't like it and I was like okay, no fine, I want fine. this music so when I left him as a coach I was like no having that music <laughs> um, and I'm so glad I did so I, I have a I have a I have a, a spot for for that mobile Christmas stuff so anyone going to British Nationals take note yeah if you uh, I will I will always be happy about let's make it a Jack Christmas Storm <laughs> anything that we might not know about you ooh um, I love Wally's you love wallies. I love wallies. Oh, cool. Yeah, as a as a as a thing. As um, I always think double double and triple wallies should be a job. Mm. It's, I've always I've always thought. That. Yeah, no, I um, I love my wallies. I I, I kind of uh, I take I like to do a few on a, on the warm up, and I always mm. like trying to make it as big as I can. Would you ever add one to a choreo sequence? Well, I'd be slightly worried that they count it as a loop. Oh, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, you like, are very much of the Yeah, because yeah, like I feel like if you rotate more than once, they'd want to count it as a jump. Yeah, so I don't know. I guess what I need to do is like do my seven jumps and then do a triple wally. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, learn, one, one, learn a triple wally first, <laughs> um, and then do one and just be like, yeah, how are you going to mark that? <laughs> what are you calling now? Yeah, because they would call it, wouldn't they? They'd they'd they call would. something, or they might make my. I don't know if that would make my third spin not count or something like that. No, surely not. I don't know, because you're only allowed to do so many yeah. elements, aren't you? Well, surely the last one. Okay, we will look into this. <laughs> yes, we will look into this. <laughs> this, is, this will be a work in progress. <laughs> um, and then we noticed you had very cool Batman training gear. Ah, yes. Yes, I love Tell us about that. Well, this is just part of my eccentricity really I feel like you know if I feel like you know you, you're, you're I like I like training tops that reflect either the music I'm skating to or like personality or like I have I have a few other ones as well that um, that I've worn on competition practices before where there's like a, like a, a kung fu panda on it um, Amazing. Yeah, I love I love this top as well. How do you source them? Um, so there's oh, some of them at different places. One of them I bought off Facebook, That's like a, one of those targeted ad things. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> and I thought it was like it was like eight quid, and I was like, oh, I, you know, I'll buy that because it looks cool. It'd probably be awful, but I'll you know get it. And it was like the nicest top ever. I was like, ah, oh, bargain. Um, wow. But yeah, so um, there's a, some of them are like like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu rash guards. Oh, um, I see. There's a couple more that, there's, that I've got my eye on that I really want, and I'm going to drop hints for Christmas. Um, so um, can, can you tell, can you give us any hints? Oh, um, I love the uh, I love the, the the tatami rash guard brand. Oh, okay. They they make like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu kit. They, they mm. so this there's a story to this. So basically, a couple of years ago at the rink, they uh, when I was training at a different rink, um, and they um, they melted the ice because they'd hired out the the space to high hold the uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu National Championships okay. and I was working at the rink I was working like one of the cafe things and um, right at the end I was I think it was like 11 o'clock at night or something they were putting the kit away they were kind of they had like one left they had like one competition left uh, and I was we stood watching this competition and we all had a go on the mats oh, nice. as, a, as like a as like a, um, a team of people who were working there and uh, they were putting these tops away um, and I was looking at them going oh they look cool so I was like I went to the guy and was like well, where did you buy these from and he gave me the, the you know, and I went and I bought like six because um, <laughs> I just think they're so cool um, but yeah it was um, what was Brazilian Jiu Jitsu like oh it's a weird sport what, what is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? It's like a martial arts. Thing. Is it like Jiu Jitsu? It's a bit like Judo, I think. Or? Yeah, a bit okay. like Judo, I think. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was fun. <laughs> I like how you you saw the competition. You didn't take away from it the sport, just just the kit. Well, the, 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 I was going to say this, it would be it would be a risk of injury. I think. Oh I would, yeah, no, you know, sure. like um, it was one of those things where like I, I would love to kind of do a bunch of different things. You know, it's like mm. oh, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that, but I don't want to risk the injury of it. I actually, um, I was chatting to Keegan Messing at Autumn Classic, and he he has he rides his motorcycles yes. and does skiing and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should give things a try. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. He manages it. Um, and then um, you've got your two character programs for this season. Yes. Any thoughts about what you what characters would you pick? 
the season? Is there like a wish list? Oh, you... I don't know. I um, I would love to do. I've always, I, one of the things I would. It's a bit like Queen. It's always been a bit of a second choice. I would always. I was always loved to do like a like a Russian folk song Ooh. thing. I, again, I don't quite know what piece of music it would be. It's always just been like a bit of an idea. It's not quite gone through that kind of evolved state away. I don't exactly know what the piece of music is, but I've always wanted to do kind of a um, kind of uh, stylized and, and dancey in that way. So, so you know, of... maybe that'll that'll come to fruition. I don't know if. <laughs> so last question. Um, you also wear refreshingly colourful costumes, mm. unlike the majority of men in the singles discipline and in pairs. Yes. Um, can you tell us a bit about how those get designed? So, um, it's, yeah, so it's done by Sparkle by Joanne. Um, she's she's very good. Uh, we I've used her for the last, uh, I think it's five, six outfits, if not years. Oh. Um, we, we, so we listen to the music, we kind of, we come up with like the character piece. We come up with something that, um, is you know, we like and, and she's very very good she she almost she comes up with stuff that I kind of I look at and go oh well I was thinking something like this but that's better uh, like like for example with the Bohemian Rhapsody piece yes uh, I wanted to go with something like the yellow jacket mm-hmm. sure. and white pants and I knew this would look awful but I wanted to go with it anyway because <laughs> it's Bohemian Rhapsody sure. uh, so she came up with the costume that I have now which is infinitely better than that and it, that's like a nod to kind of uh, Freddie Mercury in different ways so uh, there's the red from uh, We Are The Champions bit there's mm. like you know it's designed in different ways there's like the, the, he has like a if you google Freddie Mercury they keep, they kept coming up like a, 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 black, a red a black and white cat suit that he kept wearing okay um, oh fine yeah That's yeah like so there's like uh, there's so we put a little bit around the waist on that yeah there's just little nods to different queen bits throughout littered throughout that so I really like that outfit just for that reason um, that there's like little little nods to different queen bits there the free program one is like a like the ringmaster kind of thing because yeah, we sure. had like because again it, it's like a nod back to um, I really like I, I liked the idea of having like a like almost like an abandoned yes, theme, park theme park thing yeah, yeah. so we thought oh why don't we have like a, a like a ringmaster type say like a circus conductor type person but, but we'll have it yeah with joker colours yeah and so yeah both I think both of these look really good I, I really like them Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, my pleasure. And best of luck at British National. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you there. Yeah, thank you.